no! Spy! Bill Nye the Science Guy. Brought to you by Tex Nematodes Roundworm Roundup, the dude ranch for blood sucking invertebrates. When you think of an animal, you probably think of one with a backbone a fish, a frog, a horse, or a human. But 90% of the animals on Earth don't have backbones. If the number of animals with backbones were this big, the number of animals without backbones would be this big. They have ways of moving and eating and thinking that are totally different from ours. They're called invertebrates. That means no vertebra, no backbone. Now, most of the animals in the world don't have a backbone. Now, without them, there wouldn't be any of us backboners around. Now, take a look at this. It's our where you fit in chart of science. It's a chart of all the animals in the world. Now, right now, you are here. You're a human. You have a backbone, along with a few other animals. But today, you're here with the invertebrates. Most of the animals that live in the sea, bugs and insects on the land, and the worms that crawl on the ground. They all have no backbone. Well, here's a classic. It's a squid. Uh, actually, it's, it's a rubber model of a squid. Uh -huh. And it's an invertebrate. And it moves something like this. It doesn't have a backbone. Now, if it had a backbone, well, it would be hard to move. It just couldn't move in the same way. <laughs> and its mouth will be stuck way up here. There, there's no advantage to having a backbone. I mean, most of the animals on Earth don't have one. Without bones, though, it is hard for invertebrates to get very big. They get too spread out for how much they weigh. Unless they live in the sea. And the water supports them. That's why some of the very largest animals on Earth live deep in the ocean. From high in the mountains to deep in the sea, invertebrates are everywhere. a desperate invertebrate groupie. He was a spineless punk rocker. Together, they made rock and roll history. Squid and Nancy, a love story so moving, it will make your spine tingle. Trolling, is he a loser? Hey, that's my cousin you're talking about. Yeah, right there. Oh, hi, I'm a vertebrate. That means I have a backbone. Animals without backbones are called invertebrates. Ow, sometimes I think they're better off without a backbone. Will you stop? This pond is teeming with invertebrates. You can't see them, but they're there. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll show you under the microscope. Let's put a drop on. Mm -hmm. And then turn it into position. Now we're looking for something moving. Oh, 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 right there, right there. Do you see it? Do you see? Hi, this is a water flea, or Daphnia. And look, she's got eggs inside. Pretty soon there'll be lots more Daphnias. She's an invertebrate. And that's just in one tiny drop of pond water. Think of the zillions of invertebrates in the zillions of drops of pond water all over the world. There's way more invertebrates than there are of us. And that's a good thing. We need them. The best 
best way to learn about invertebrates is to study them yourself. Take a big jar and fill it with wet soil. But the dirt shouldn't be too wet or packed too tight. Pour a little bit of brown sugar on the top so your worms have something to eat. Then wrap some black paper around the jar. You know, because worms like their privacy. Now you add about a dozen worms. You can collect earthworms outside after it rains, or you just dig up some dirt and find them squirming around. in different things, like old coffee grounds, banana peels, orange peels, dead leaves, you know, whatever, just to see what they like to eat and what they don't. After a couple days, you can see all the pathways and the tunnels that the worms make and what they ate. But you have to let them go back into the ground after a few weeks. You know, I mean, worms, they don't mind staying inside for a while, but they really dig squirming around in the ground outside. Butterflies are what? Insects. And insects are what? Invertebrates. That's right. Every insect is an invertebrate. And just because you're an invertebrate doesn't mean you're not pretty. You, know, you might think of worms, slimy little uh, protozoans. No, no, no. But butterflies are beautiful. And they've got no backbone. And if I sit like this too long, <laughs> I'm not going to have a backbone either. I mean, uh, invertebrates. The church? All right, well, let's set out to spineless creatures. Are you aware that you outnumber the others by about 30 to 1? You can live just about anywhere. Move in highly specialized ways. So what if most of you are slimy and don't have a backbone? Invertebrates, you're supposed to be spineless. Now you there and you show them who rules the world. Uh, sorry, I'll let them see you down there. You are now witnessing a crab molt. It is literally walking out of its own skin. Many invertebrates can do something that animals like us can't. If they lose an arm or a leg, they can grow a whole new one. Take a look at this. This is a crab shell from a crab that got in a pretty bad fight. He got pinched by another crab. Look, he lost a lot of his shell over here. And his whole left claw is gone. His whole left arm is pinched off. Now, crabs grow by shedding their shells. We say they, they molt. So this is the first shell that the crab shed after he got in that bad fight. The next time he shed his shell... At the seashore? Look, this part of his shell is repaired. And he has a whole new left claw. Brand new arm. Isn't that wild? And then the time he shed his shell after that, his left claw is almost full-sized, and his body is just about back to normal. See, invertebrates can do this because their bodies aren't too complicated. If an animal like us tried to do it, we have, we have too many muscles and bones and tendons and nerves. We, we can't pull it off. But crabs can. See, look. This is the same crab. He's over here. He's fine. Okay. Uh, Strong swimmer. He's an invertebrate. He can regenerate parts of his body. Can't you? See, he's fine. I sure am, Bill. All right, is there anything in there? Oh, um, weird. Got some? There's like, there's some caterpillars. All right. This is a camel cricket, and it is nocturnal. And if we didn't set the trap, we wouldn't have known they lived in old growth forests because it's nocturnal and we would have never seen it. It's weird looking. Oh, look at that one. Oh, weird. Ew. We use the pitfall trap. It catches them live. It uses bait, like um, f fruit rinds and leaves and stuff. All invertebrates are very important to the forest. They each have a job or a place or a role. There's a chemical thing in their hand. Black and kind of gold kind of stripes. We separate them out into different groups, and then we send them off to scientists, which identify them more closely. Invertebrates really roll. You and I are vertebrates. We have brains connected to a central nervous system which runs through our spine, our backbone. 
But invertebrates have no spines, so how do they know what to do? Well, please consider the following. Many invertebrates have what's called a nerve net. Their nerves are spread through their whole bodies and they operate without a brain. If one part of the nerve net gets stimulated or tickled, it can signal another part without having to send a signal all the way to a brain and back. In a way, it's a lot less complicated. So, if this side of the sea jelly gets a signal like, what's that smell? And then, go this way. It can do it without using a brain. So the way an animal, like a lobster, looks at the world has got to be completely different than the way we look at it. Because it's like this animal has its brain spread through its whole body. There's, there's no backbone, no spine, no central nervous system. I mean, an animal like this probably never uh, forgets what it's going to do next. Oh, it's the old forgot what I was going to do next gag again. Next, he'll probably say, thank you for joining me on Consider the Fall. Oh, yeah, uh, thank you for joining me on Consider the Fall. <laughs> Warning. The previous information applies to most but not all invertebrates. The cephalopod, squid, and octopi have a highly organized and centralized network of nerves known as a brain. Yeah, a little to the left. My upper spine hurts. Yeah, right there. Oh, it's you again. Well, there are far more animals without backbones than there are with backbones. That's why you never see an octopus getting a massage. <laughs> Invertebrates are often simple inside. This is an Ascaris worm. It's a parasite. It lives inside another animal, namely us. They grow from eggs that can get inside humans, usually after we don't wash our hands and then put our hands in our mouth. Ascaris worms can make us sick. No human wants them around. So to make sure their species survives, these worms make lots of eggs. If all of those eggs grew to full-size worms, there would be 35 new worms a second, represented here by this plate of spaghetti. That's every second. They eat and make more invertebrates. 350 eggs every 10 seconds. If we let them, they'd make over 2,830 eggs every minute. It's a strategy that many invertebrates go for. 125,000 eggs every hour. They don't hunt, fish, or farm. They get us to bring their food to them. And it would be over 3 million of them every day. They're invertebrates. They try to reproduce. You've got to respect that. Oh, boy. See, this, this is just spaghetti. It's just yeah. a representation, really. <laughs> Jellies, sea jellies, jellyfish. Of course, they're not fish at all because they have no backbones. They're invertebrates. They drift through the sea, eating tiny little things. They're carnivores. Now, you might think that an animal like this would be easy to catch and eat, but they're not because they've got tentacles with venom, stingers. So if you don't want to touch them, right? Maybe you don't want to eat them. Sea jellies live everywhere in the sea. For them, no backbone, no problem. Well, look, of course the movie stunk. The director's a dung beetle. A second, I'm going to lose this guy. Yeah, I got to go. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, my tapeworm is here. Uh hey. P-worm man, how you doing? Don't... Uh, 
the buzz on you, okay? People find you, uh, disgusting? Say you live in their intestines, absorbing their food. Well, you know what I say? I say, hey, people, lose weight the easy way with the tapeworm diet. <laughs> This is an octopus. She's an invertebrate. <laughs> this is an octopus. Uh, what we call a cephalopod. It's an invertebrate, it means head foot. See, her head is where she has her eyes. And this big sack back here is where she has all her internal organs. Then she uses her brain to control all these arms, which go all over the place. Get a long balloon like this one and fill it about halfway with water. Now tie a knot in it. See, a balloon is just like an invertebrate. It doesn't have a backbone. So if I hold it like this, it folds in the middle. It loses its shape and it can't support its own weight. But look, when you put it in the water, it straightens out. The water supports it. That's why the world's largest invertebrates, like octopi and giant squid, live in the sea, because the water supports them. But don't take my word for it. Try it. So come on, everybody. Do the invertebrate. You're so beautiful, my sweet. So intelligent, so elegant. The spine would only get in the way. We know your day will come. The oceans will rise, the cities will sink. And then invertebrates like you will, dare I say, fill the world. This is a sea star. What's this on? I think he said, this is a sea star. We used to call them starfish, but they're not fish that live in the sea, so we call them sea stars. They don't have a backbone. They're invertebrate. See, it's got five limbs. If one of them breaks off, it can regenerate. Aha! Didn't I tell you? Invertebrates are everywhere. <laughs> That's our show. Thanks for watching. If you'll excuse me, I've got some exoskeleton compliance coefficients to calculate. See ya! Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. This is a hermit crab. It lives on the sea floor, eating things, eating all kinds of stuff. Maybe not the same kind of stuff that you and I would eat, but it's down there doing its job, eating away. Now, it's an invertebrate. There's a lot of invertebrates that do this kind of job, okay? There's a lot of invertebrates all over the world eating dead stuff. Stuff that you and I don't eat. I mean, I'm talking about dead leaves, dead trees, dead animals, dead stuff. See, see, without the invertebrates down there eating, well, then you and I would be buried alive, okay? We wouldn't be up to here. We wouldn't be up to our knees. No, we'd be up to here. We would disappear. There would be no more us, okay? There would be no humans without invertebrates. See, the invertebrates have been in the world a long time. They're everywhere. They're on the ground. They're in the ocean. They're in the air. There are trillions of them. And they've all got no spies. Build by the science guy. 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 Build by the
science guy. Science rules. Bill Nye the science guy. Inertia is a property of matter. Bill, 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 Bill,
the dirt shouldn't be too wet or packed too tight. Pour a little bit of brown sugar on the top so your worms have something to eat. Then wrap some black paper around the jar. You know, because worms like their privacy. <laughs> now you add about a dozen worms. Cute. You can collect earthworms outside after it rains, or you just dig up some dirt and find them squirming around. And feed in different things, like old coffee grounds, banana peels, 